So now our case unfolds a little bit more. In step three, we have new diagnostic results at 1210. So let's see what we got. Okay, so we've got a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis with IV contrast. Now, you're never going to be asked to interpret a CT scan or a chest x-ray or any sort of imaging on the NCLEX if it's something that's outside of your scope of practice. At most, you might see a 12 lead EKG or something that you're expected to interpret. But here, this is going to be given to you just kind of for reference, and you're going to have the interpretation, which here says we've got colonic wall thickening, pericolic fat stranding, and sigmoid diverticula consistent with colonic diverticulitis. And you can kind of see here, we've got some of these out pouchings on the sigmoid colon. And so yes, we, we're correct. We saw that this client has all findings consistent with diverticulitis, and now our imaging has confirmed that. So in question three, we need to prioritize hypotheses or remember, determine where do I start? What's most important? What's the biggest risk? Specifically here, we're asked, the nurse is most concerned about the client's risk for developing either a fistula, an abscess, bowel perforation, or contrast-induced acute kidney injury. So these are all actual risks that could occur with this client, but we need to identify what is most concerning. What is going to be most problematic if it occurs? And if you remember from our prioritization framework, we're looking at issues of airway, breathing, circulation, or potential issues of airway, breathing, and circulation. So let's quickly consider each of these. A fistula, that's an abnormal opening between two different places. So you might have a fistula connecting two parts of the intestines. You might have a fistula more commonly connecting the intestine and the bladder, or sometimes even the intestine and the skin. And so obviously if that happens, those two things aren't supposed to communicate. You're going to see bacteria going from your intestines into your bladder, and that could cause a urinary tract infection, which is not good, but it's also not going to quickly cause major problems. And then an abscess. So right where we've got this inflammation at the site of the diverticulitis, you've got a strong local immune response to that area with lots of white blood cells and pus. And so this can develop an abscess where you have this localized collection of fluid. Usually that can make this more difficult to heal and to treat, but unless it ruptures and that pus and inflammatory material goes into the abdominal cavity, this is not as problematic. It's contained. If it's in an abscess, it's contained. Then comparing that to bowel perforation, where if this blocked, inflamed diverticula ruptures, then you're going to have that intestinal content bacteria spilling into the abdominal cavity. And this could very quickly be dangerous because if you consider, for example, the fact that we can do peritoneal dialysis, where we dialyze someone in their abdomen, that's because that is so vascular, there are so many blood vessels there, that if you spill intestinal contents into your peritoneal cavity, it's almost immediately going to go into your bloodstream and cause widespread sepsis and shock. So that does have the potential to be an issue of circulation. And then finally, a risk for contrast-induced acute kidney injury. Now, this client did get IV contrast in order to get this scan. Most often, large volumes of IV contrast in someone who has chronic kidney disease can create a contrast-induced acute kidney injury. He doesn't have any chronic kidney disease when we look at his history here. So this could happen. If it does happen, it's going to take a couple of days of treating with IV fluids where he might have some risk for electrolyte imbalances or further fluid imbalances. But this is not as immediately concerning and as dangerous as if he develops a bowel perforation. So that's the one I'm most concerned about. And we're correct.